Hello and welcome to All Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a sea urchin. Sea urchins are part of a group of animals called echinoderms, which also includes animals like sea stars, sea cucumbers, and sand dollars. Sea urchins, as you can see here, have a rigid, usually spherical body, and move by means of hundreds of tiny, transparent adhesive quote-unquote tube feet, which we'll see soon. They also have a lot of spikes covering their body, as you can clearly see. So before I get into the anatomy, I actually have two types of sea urchins here. So this one is a green sea urchin, which is usually harvested from the Atlantic Ocean, and this one is a purple sea urchin, which is usually harvested from the Pacific Ocean. So a morphological difference between these two is that the purple sea urchins have bigger spikes, while the green sea urchins have smaller but more numerous spikes. Also, green sea urchins tend to stick to shallow water and are fast and active, while purple sea urchins have a more widespread range and are typically slower. So first let's look at the external anatomy. So this side here, where the anus is located, is called the aboral side, while this side, where the mouth is located, is called the oral side. You can also see this in the purple sea urchin, so this would be the oral side. Okay, so this hard covering is the skeleton of the sea urchin, and it's called the test. So it's this thing, below all the spikes. The test is made up of fused plates that encircle the sea urchin, like the slices of an orange. The test is hollow, and most of the animal's soft parts are inside of it. And the test is actually an internal skeleton, not external, and so it's surrounded by a very thin epidermis. Now, sea urchins move by walking on many flexible tube feet. These tube feet are located on the oral side, near the mouth, and I'll zoom in so we can see them better. So here are the tube feet, and you can see a lot more buried along the spines. So here's one, another one, one more. So basically anything that kind of has this circular thing on top are tube feet. And the circular tip acts like a sucker. The oral side of the purple sea urchin also has tube feet. So all of this and all of this, they're all tube feet. Tube feet are operated by a water vascular system. And this works through hydraulic pressure allowing the sea urchin to pump water into and out of the tube feet. The tube feet are also assisted by the spines right here, which help push the body along or lift the sea urchin off the substrate. These spines are attached to the sea urchin by a ball and socket joint, just like your shoulder joint. So you can see it rotates like your shoulder joint. And you can also see this one moves too. I'll switch to the green sea urchin. So here in the green sea urchin, you can also see spines that move. So you can see this one, it moves. It's kind of harder to see in this one because the spines are shorter, but you can see that they move. Importantly, they don't have a 360 degree range of motion, and just like your shoulder joints, they do have a point where they don't move beyond. So for this one, for example, it moves this way, but it won't move past that point. You see? And for this one, it moves this way, but it won't move past this point. You can see these bumps where some of the spines have snapped off, and these small knobs where spines are attached are called tubercles. We can also see them on the green sea urchin, but you can see them better here. So these are the tubercles. Now, as the sea urchins move with their tube feet, they use their beak-like mouth right here to scrape algae off rocks. I'll zoom in. So if we zoom in, you can see that it has five teeth arranged in a circle. So one, two, three, four, five. And the circle around the mouth right here that is free of spines and is basically a hole in the test is called the peristome. So now on the green sea urchin, 
you can see the mouth here so one two three four five teeth and you can see the peristome again here now on the aboral side you can see the anus near the center which is where the waste is expelled and next to that is the madreporite right here which is the opening to the water vascular system the hydraulic system that moves the tube feet of the sea urchin and this circular region in the aboral surface that contains the anus and the madreporite is called a periprot. So now let's look at the purple sea urchin again. So on the aboral side, you can see the anus right here and next to that the madreporite here. You can also see this flower shaped structure around the anus and they're called the genital plates. Each plate has a single duct where the gametes are released into the water. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. First, carefully insert a scissor blade close to the top of the aboral surface and use the scissors to cut around the periproct. Then, make an incision down the side of the sea urchin until you reach the halfway point and cut around the sea urchin in a complete circle, carefully removing the test and small pieces along the way. Now you can see that sea urchins don't have the same kind of symmetry we do. If you draw a line vertically down the middle of your body, you'll see that one side mirrors the other. That's bilateral symmetry. Sea urchins have radial symmetry, which is symmetry around a central axis. Just picture how the slices of a whole pizza are identical. Here you can see that each quote-unquote slice, so around from here to here, are identical and there's five quote-unquote slices. So the most obvious structures are the five gonads here. Some of them from this side have been moved to the other side during handling. This sea urchin could be male or female. There's no way to tell unless we actually see it reproducing. So these gonads would either be testes or ovaries. Testes release sperm, while ovaries release eggs. Both sperm or eggs are released through small openings near the anus called gonophores on the genital plates we looked at before. And fertilization happens externally. So now I'm going to lift off this little cap here. Okay, so now let's take a look at the digestive system. This complicated white structure in the middle of the floor of the body cavity is called the Aristotle's lantern and is a structure that contains the mouth and the pharynx. The rest of the digestive system is a lot harder to distinguish and might have been damaged when we opened up the test. So at the top of the lantern, the pharynx opens into the esophagus here, which runs back down the outside of the lantern like this, and then leads into this wider part, which is the stomach. The stomach then runs in a full circle around the lower inside of the test, and then leads into the intestine here, which completes another circle in the opposite direction, like this, this time higher on the test. Both the stomach and the intestine are normally attached to the walls of the test by mesenteries. After the intestine completes its circle, it leads into the rectum here, and then the anus. Now let's take a look at the water vascular system. As I mentioned before, this is a hydraulic system that moves the tube feet of the sea urchin. First, water is drawn in through the madreporite. Then, the water goes through the stone canal. Right here, it's been cut. But the stone canal would then travel down to enter the ring canal, which encircles the esophagus, right? Just waiting for it to focus. Yeah, the ring canal encircles the esophagus around right here at the center of the sea urchin. So from the ring canal, 
the water then goes into the five radial canals, which you can see right here. So you see this one here, which runs up the inner wall of the test. From the radial canals, the water enters these little raised structures called ampulla, which act as valves for the tube feet that it's connected to on the other side. You can see the ampullae better on the test pieces that we cut. So we can see the ampullae right here. When the ampullae is closed, the water pressure causes the tube foot to extend, and when the ampullae is open, the pressure is released and the tube foot is withdrawn. This allows the sea urchin to move around using his tube feet in kind of like a walking motion. Now I'll just remove the gonads to get a better look at the Aristotle's lantern. So now we have a better view of the Aristotle's lantern, and if I lift it up, you can really see how fascinating the Aristotle's lantern is. It's a very weird looking structure. So now let's open up the purple sea urchin in the same way, cutting a small circle around the top, then cutting a larger circle around the equator, and removing the pieces in the middle. The inner structure is very similar to the green sea urchin, but it turned out that the structures were better preserved in this one. Here you can see the mesentery tissue that we mentioned earlier. It's like a curtain of tissue that attaches the test to the stomach and intestine. Oh, and if we zoom in, we can see how the stomach runs around the inside of the sea urchin. So this is the stomach right here, the kind of green thing, and you can see how it's coiled inside the sea urchin. So now I'll just lift the cap up a little more. So we can see the digestive system really well here. And we see how the pharynx leads out from the Aristotle's lantern and goes down. Then you can see this entire stomach that just wraps around the sea urchin. And then you can see this intestine that goes around the other way, then leads into the anus right here. You can also see this additional yellow tube that runs along the stomach right here. This is called a siphon, and it's involved in the reabsorption of water or nutrients from food. Now you can see the intact stone canal right here, which leads into the ring canal that wraps around the esophagus. So if you were wondering where the gonads were, they're right here, and they lead right into these holes, which are the gonophores, which are where the sperm slash eggs would be released, right here. So there's one for each gonad. Aight, that's the end of the sea urchin dissection. Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about sea urchins to send you on your way. The purple sea urchin population along the US West Coast has skyrocketed 10,000% in the last five years. The soaring sea urchin population has eaten through up to 90% of kelp forests and have disturbed the delicate marine ecosystem so much that other critical species are now in danger. Scientists aren't sure yet what has caused the surge in population, but they suspect climate change may have been a factor. You can help restore kelp forests by buying and eating purple sea urchins that have been removed from the ocean floor. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful.